Madam President, uh, General Secretary of IAMCA, and Priya, whom I have known for quite some time now, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, and uh, fellow participants. Today we are gathered, we have gathered here to observe the World Mental Health Day, which is a significant global event. Now, this year's theme is mental health is a universal human right because it underscores, uh, it serves as a powerful reminder to all of us that it, the mental well-being is intrinsic to our physical well-being. This year's theme uh, underscores the fundamental truth that mental health is an essential aspect of human dignity and should be accessible to all irrespective of the background, of the circumstances and the location. Mental health is often unseen, but it is integral to human existence. It affects how we think, how we feel and how we act. It therefore shapes our interactions, our decisions, our relationships and the quality of life. Yet, we all know that it has been ignored for a very long time, it has been stigmatized and often neglected as well. So it has been in 2015 September that the United Nations took a cognizant view of uh, the worldwide burden of mental health and included it as one of the SDGs and also stated that for the next 15 years, mental health is going to be the only goal for international development. And that has created, you know, that by that, the United Nations has created history. So, if we come back to our own country, India, mental health um, is one of the priorities as far as the non-disease uh, burden is concerned, you know, the, uh, the non-communicable diseases is concerned. It is the, it is the primary, uh, the, uh, you know, the disease that is now taking over the other forms of non-communicable diseases. We are not talking about the communicable diseases here. And in 2017, mental illnesses were the most, second most common cause of year, years of life adjusted with disability lived with disability and the six most common cause of disability adjusted life years. You know, these are two very potent indicators when we are talking about diseases. So these are the measures of the health system and the healthcare system of any country. Um, now, as per the 2021 data that was published, um, you know, the present population, psychiatric to population ratio is 0.75 per lakh. And those of psychologists and counselors is how much? Even half, 0.3 per lakh. And what we need is actually, you know, close to three per lakh population. And of course, with COVID, this demand has further increased, so we need to have a relook at that. As per WHO, in India, the people seeking mental health services are 264 million. And the psychologists and counselors that are present or available to provide these services are dismal 792. It has to be five times more. So we are lacking behind and this just shows the amount of neglect and ignorance as a society. And of course, um, you know, I wouldn't like to directly blame the policy makers because we elect them and send them there. So as a, as a society, we are at fault somewhere. So India has adopted the national, uh, you know, uh, mental health policy when? 2017, not very long ago, it's very, very recent. Before that, you can very well imagine what kind of uh, services uh, were available and whether mental health was, you know, uh, even recognized at all. And there has been a revision of the Mental Health Act in 2017. And if we go to the you know, statistics, and why I'm going to tell you this, because uh, YWCA has taken a very important step. 
Depressive disorders are to the order of 33% and anxiety disorders are 19%. And you know, in the coming years, um, depression is going to take over as the most important <coughs> or the most common mental health disorder. The reason being, there is a lot of uh, development, economic development going on. There is migration, there is um, urbanization, modernization, all happening at the same time. So because of this, there is a lot of social demographic shift that is happening and there is there are adjustment issues happening with that to, uh, in the people. So that is the reason why depression is going to take over very soon unless we uh, take some steps right away to mitigate that. Now, uh, I think it's not only the mental health services that we should be looking at. What is equally important uh, and that goes out to the policy makers, the politicians who are still, you know, whom we have elected. Equally important is the fundamental, uh, you know, benefits of civil, political, economic and cultural rights that every individual should get because that contributes a lot to the mental well-being of every individual. So as a policy maker, one has to look at not only provision of services, but also providing the right kind of environment uh, to the people uh, as citizens to flourish in their in the respective countries. Now, when I'm uh, you know talking about uh, depression, and depression most commonly is found in females. You know, that is a very sad fact and it's a very stark fact and that is the reason I congratulate YWCA for starting this counseling center because it is much much needed a large part of it uh, you know goes uh, unrecognized and uh, it is transferred to the family members in some form or the other so in a way the families are destroyed I'm reminded of 2014 when Brain Behavior Research Foundation was started at that point of time, uh, and that's about the same time when Mental Health Act was also, you know, uh, adopted in India. Mental health was hardly recognized, and that is the reason, you know, there are so many organizations who are working independently in the field of mental health, but they have not got the same kind of, uh, you know, recognition or uh, support from the population. Reason being, it's mental health itself is considered a stigma. So. We started off, but the progress, uh, you know, was not as much, or the recognition was not as much until COVID struck. It's unfortunate that we had to go through something like COVID, such a destructive uh, you know, pandemic, to, to be able to recognize the importance of mental health. And you know, things like Sir rightly said, uh, it is palpable, it is seen, it is very much there, and. You know, the psychologists and our center as well is seeing the brunt of it. You will be surprised to know, so to listen to cases, extremely, uh, you know, wealthy people even going through these kind of problems. You know, we just think that people probably who are struggling and uh, are struggling with the daily needs are facing these problems. But it's there everywhere, in all the strata, in all, in both genders. And if I uh, would like to tell you, in, if it is depression and anxiety in females, then uh, and also eating disorders because of body image issues. So it is uh, autism and uh, attention deficit <coughs> hyperactivity disorder, which is more common in men in India. I'm talking about our uh, fact figures in India. So what I feel is, uh, I would also like to. Uh, just highlight a few facts that as the chairperson of an organization who has been working in the field of mental health that the services that are being provided in India are quite disorganized. Uh, I mean, I would, I'm so sorry to state here that, uh, you know, people just do some internships here and there, some certificate courses online, and then they are, qualify, they qualify themselves as counselors. They do not what they do not understand that counseling is a very serious business. It's a very serious thing, and you are dealing with a potential threat also when you are counseling somebody because that person may very well if you are not you do not have the capacity to recognize that this this person is in a serious mental state, there could be very well a loss of life as well. So these these are 
fact that this is one thing that apart from providing the services that one needs to recognize that hopefully some systematization would be brought uh, hopefully in the near future by the government um, that needs some waking up by the government as well. But nonetheless, as organizations, like we said, uh, there is a lot of deficit in uh, the requirement versus the provision of uh, mental health services. So it is the organizations like us who can pitch in and try to fill in the gap as much as possible and a uh, very important step taken by WCA today by opening a counseling center that will, I'm sure, going to cater the, to at least the drainage area around your center right here. And I feel you cannot work alone. In unity lies strength. So if you want to create a dead, at least, you know, uh, in this big madness problem of uh, mental health, let's work together. Let's fit in like, you know, the jigsaw puzzle. Our strength was, and your strength, you know, we can fit in uh, where we can work best and work together for uh, creating safe spaces for everyone in this country. So let us use this day not only to create awareness but to take action and uh, extend, let us extend a hand to those who need these services uh, and uh, break the silence around mental health. But of course that's happening, it's, the acceptance is now increasing and uh, we should also advocate policies that prioritize mental health and well-being and those policies could be anywhere for a, for a teacher, it could be in the school, for an employer in the office space, and a lot of things have happened, are happening, new, new uh, regulations have come in. So we can ensure that together that mental health is not just a right on paper, but it is an actuality in everybody's lives. So thank you so everyone for uh, coming here, and, uh, and I have to thank Gia uh, and Pranita for uh, you know, inviting me to this very important occasion and uh, my congratulations, my best wishes for a successful uh, running of this counseling centre. Thank you so much.